Business school professors often like to ask the class, what's the ultimate goal of a business? And a lot of people will say, oh, to generate a profit or to grow revenues. Well, the answer is to survive. So every business will undergo turmoil and need to rethink their strategy in the face of competition or a changing marketplace. So when we look at companies like Umbrella, they had to pivot. This was uh, about, let's say, more than several years back when we last looked at the company. And at that time, they were pivoting because they had made some wrong bets on sports action cameras, drones, and AR VR markets. And they were primarily impacted by GoPro and DJI, which were two of their customers that had adopted competing solutions, and that negatively impacted their revenues. So at that time, 60% of their revenues came from security cameras, and they were pivoting into computer vision. So you can see here the impact that the wrong moves had. And from 2016 through 2019, you can see their drop in revenues and also the negative earnings. And then on the right-hand side, you can see the four quarters of 2019 that showed the company was resurrecting themselves. And the way that they were going to do that was through computer vision. So the thesis here was that they spent 15 years building hardware that captured video and uh, image processing so that they were able to take all that know-how and, and train a deep neural AI network to start understanding what it sees. So they were going to pivot from being a semiconductor processing solutions for video company to a computer vision company. And when we talk about computer vision, I always like to uh, throw up this meme here and it shows Arnold in Terminator 2 and he's trying to find Sarah Connor and he looks in the phone book and her name here has a squiggly line through it and he can't read it. So that's just taking the piss out of the effectiveness of CAPTCHAs. But computer vision allows robots to see and it's a growth area that we've explored in the past. And here you can see that red dotted line in the center of that chart shows the last time that we looked at the company from the right of that that's what they've done. So you can see through 2021, they were seeing that growth, but then it sort of uh, tails off in 2022. And most recently, this last quarter, it falls. So there's some questions around whether or not the pivot is working out for them. Now, they still um, have their pedigree in security cameras. So they have uh, around 900 million security cameras under their umbrella. And interesting little side note, there's actually more security cameras in the United States than China and twice as many in the U.S. than there are in the U.K., a place where people often think about CCTV watching every square inch of the country. So Umbrella has done a lot of work in security cameras. Their new solution sells for two times as much. So we can only assume that offers computer vision capabilities. And most of the computer vision revenues for the company so far have come from camera replacement. So they've been able to convince existing customers to replace a security camera and pay twice as much. So we're only assuming that that comes with some functionality that should replace human security guards with computer algorithms. So Gartner has cited the security market, uh, let's say security cameras in particular as being the largest 5G enabled internet of things market until 2023. Then it switches to automotive. Now, Umbrella talks about this uh, new idea of AI meets IoT, AIoT, and their focus is on Internet of Things endpoint applications where most of the decision making originates from the data that's being collected. Things like smart locks, access control, body cams, robots in factories or mobile robots, and of course, automotive advanced driver assistance solutions or ADOS. So eight, uh, over 70% of Umbrella employees are software engineers, and what they're doing is building out a full stack approach, just like NVIDIA is for automotive. So it isn't just about building the hardware, but they're also building the software as well, and that lets them um, make the entire stack better since everything's being grown in-house. Now, when we look at where the revenues are coming from for the company, uh, they don't provide a lot of color, and this is probably um, a, a, the biggest takeaway of this presentation is how 
opaque umbrella actually is. So they divide these two categories up into IoT automotive and IoT non-automotive, and then they're expecting that by 2028, nearly 70% of total revenues will come from automotive, and that's a rather small number now. So um, here's the uh, chart that shows the progress they're making. They say evidence of success growing, and um, you can see that it's rather difficult to discern what's being displayed here. There are lots of acronyms. You have three different years represented, F2023, uh, F2022E. It's just a, a big mess. But when we try to figure out what's going on, we can see that for 2022, which was last year, we're now in Q2 fiscal 2023, 25% of the revenues came from computer vision. And of that, the majority was from the cameras that they're replacing, which we can only assume they're referring to as CV Wave 1 Enterprise. You can also see the inroads they're making with auto and, of course, home. So if this is the evidence of success, then it's going to be a pretty difficult road forward for investors who don't have earnings uh, calls that come with decks, but merely audio, it's very difficult to discern what's happening. Now, I slipped, uh, skipped over the slide I wanted to touch on very quickly, survivability. So whilst they ramp up their computer vision offering and revenues are starting to stagnate a bit in the face of supply chain issues and consumers tightening their spending, our focus is on survivability. Last time we looked, they had 400 million in cash. Well, they have half that. Revenues are on the decline. You can see here this last quarter, uh, that meaningful drop there from 90 million to 80 million and losses are mounting. So they need to try and get through the uh, bear market that we're facing intact with the cash they have on hand without having to raise money from equity or debt to avenues that don't work out so well when times are tough. So we look at the valuation of Umbrella. Shares lost 68% of their value since the beginning of this year compared to a NASDAQ loss of 27%. That's a high beta uh, tech stock for you. And then if you bought shares now, you'd be paying about the same price for shares as when we last looked in January of 2020. So revenues have increased and the price has stayed the same. So that means the simple valuation ratio has fallen. It currently commands a ratio of around eight, which is about average for the 190 companies that we calculate that number for. So you certainly wouldn't say the company is overvalued, but you're betting a lot on the future success of the computer vision full stack platform they've developed. It's certainly taking a while for them to pivot and now they're facing some headwinds. They also have formidable competition from the likes of NVIDIA. When you look at NVIDIA's investor deck, uh, it talks a lot along the same lines as Ambarella does when they look at automotive. That's a company with $20 billion in cash versus the 200 that Umbrella has to work with, and that will come in handy in helping NVIDIA dominate in the areas that they want to. And when it comes to Umbrella, we just don't have sufficient metrics that are provided. Very opaque business model. You try to figure out where their geographical diversification is coming from, and you can't because 60% of the revenues come from a single distributor in Asia. So whilst it appears they're selling 83% of their products to Asia, you actually don't know who the end customer is, and there's very little information about that. So our response to what we've covered today is that we'll be removing this company from our report. We'll be keeping it in our catalog as an avoid because we don't think it's going to fare very well in the bear market and there's going to be a lot of challenges for them. They may have to raise money and we'll be happy to revisit the company when their quarterly revenues breach a hundred million dollar mark. That's a rather arbitrary number, but it would show that growth has resumed and that they're able to sell those CV units and start to realize the sort of uh, revenue growth they need to see to hit a billion dollars somewhere they had mentioned they expect high teens compound annual revenue growth from 2023 to 2028 that's a lot of growth so we're going to need to start to see that before we 
believe that this platform they spent all this time and money developing has the traction it needs to compete with the likes of NVIDIA. So please leave your comments in the comment section. Make sure to subscribe to our channel. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video today.